game seven. But I, I think one of the biggest things you said, Jenna, the fact that he played all 48 minutes. And that's something that going into the game, Ty Lue was asked, are you going to play him all 48? And he said, I don't expect to. I will if I have to. thought he was going to get my guy Jetty in there, he said, <laughs> to get LeBron a breather a couple times. We would love to see it. But, but I don't know if people understand what that truly takes for a player playing play at his level to play all 48 minutes. But, you know, LeBron, we've come to expect those type of performances mm -hmm. from him. Give credit to his trust in his teammates and to Jeff Green, the game that he had, some of the contributions by George Hill, by J.R. Smith, big three from Kyle Korver, his activity. You go down the list and some of the numbers may not pop out at you, to me, I was most impressed with LeBron understanding the balance of still showing the trust in his teammates, how he played, even when they were missing shots. Because think about the course of the first half, how many open shots and open looks that they missed, and he still continued to play the right way. He figured out the, the way in which he knew when he needed to take over, knew when he needed to dominate, which he did, but still relied on those players. Uh, tremendous insight there. There were a couple of junctures during the game where LeBron could have been more selfish. And if you pointed out during the telecast that that was Mark Jackson to, was criticizing. Yeah, yeah Mark yeah. Jackson. Mark Jackson. Well, I wasn't going to say his oh. his name, yeah. but um, there were people that were saying that he should be a, like other players, and that's one of the criticism LeBron is going to get, and it's justified sometime because we have seen him go off. 20, 22 in one quarter, and when you can't score the basketball, and you know you got a guy who can score, but on the back end of that is the point you made up, the energy burn. Like, you're going to suffer in the third and fourth quarter, mm -hmm. and we just take it for granted. Nick, you mentioned it earlier. Man, Stephen them can't play extended minutes in the 40. Durant them can't play extended minutes. Harden them can't play extended minutes. Not only their play suffers, but they don't want to. Like, LeBron is demanding it. Now, Ty Lue did a great thing by calling a timeout, which actually got LeBron another three minutes of rest in a critical spot compared to bringing him out for a short stint there. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable to see a guy who has the amount of pressure he has on him and has been on him from day one since he came into this league, at year 15, to see him continue. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take this for granted. Like, I was watching this game. Before the game, I was like, this could still go bad for LeBron. Because we're depending on him so much. But to see him do it over and over again, I'm not going to get tired of seeing it. It was phenomenal to see. There was a different level of intensity, too, from the Cavs' defense. And I, yes. I know you got the note. Like, mm -hmm. that was the other factor. Boston, I think, in their three wins at home, they weren't just 10-0 and 0 in the postseason, but also against the Cavs at home had beaten them by an average of 17. 17. But defensively, and I know Boston missed some good looks. But it was three. the Cavs' transition defense yes. that showed up for the first time. Absolutely. Cavs had a dozen turnovers, and the Celtics had three fast break points. That's not supposed to be able to happen. Mm -hmm. You turn the ball, a lot of those were live ball turnovers. A lot of those were LeBron live ball turnovers where they're going the other way. Let's talk about the minutes for a second, though. Because LeBron did not think he could do this four years ago. There's a great quote. I don't know how Dave McMenamin found it, but I give him credit. Of LeBron being asked before the playoffs started his first year back in Cleveland. So that's LeBron in year 12. That's 20 or 30 year old LeBron instead of 33 year old LeBron being asked, how many minutes can you go? He said 40, maybe 41 a night. Not like the regular season, I play the whole game if you need me to, but in the playoffs, it's too much. And by the way, the track record said that was the case. He had played prior to last night four games in the playoffs where he went all 48. They were all in the same postseason. He was 21 years old. It was 2006. The idea that he would go for 46 minutes on Friday night, and it was really 40, like he took one minute off that mattered because he was also out in the final minute of the game. Yes. 46 of 47 minutes in game six, and then all 48. And was anyone surprised by it? No. Like, what, what would you have said? Forget the points and rebounds and everything over under. What would you have said is over under at minutes going into the game? 45. 45. Yeah. 45. Like, minimum. Min we expect him to have played at least 45, 46 minutes last night. That's insane. But he had no choice. There was no choice. It wasn't like, LeBron, what are we going to play? We'll, we'll sit you down. We'll bring other guys in. There was no other option. If the Cavs were going to win this game, LeBron had to play those minutes. He had to somehow find a way to get it done for yeah. most of the postseason. Yeah. Hypothetically, there's no choice, Jenna, but there is a choice. And LeBron walks through that choice because 
you cover games, you're at arenas, you see stars. There is a signal that you can go to. You can either tap your head or you can basically eyeball the coach and tell him, come get me. LeBron walks through those signals, though, that normal players get. The end of the first quarter, perfect time to get a little blow. And Ty Lue tried to. They have sent Jetty Osmond to the scores table. Yes, they did. And he waved them off. Walked right through it. <laughs> and in the second half, there's other. I seen Steph. They come right on out. KD comes out. Clay comes out. They have that luxury. Harden comes out. Even they made a big run in game number six. Harden was on the bench. LeBron would have checked himself back in or been in the game. LeBron walks through those things, and that's one of the other things that you have to count to him. His overall conditioning in his mental state. When he got dunked on by Tatum, man, that's not no ordinary play in a game seven by a rookie, and then he body bumped him. LeBron's overall psyche not to be derailed, is able to still stay focused, and it can, it, it's amazing, and I've seen some of the greatest athletes in the world, I've played with some of the greatest athletes in the world, I've heard some of the greatest athlete stories. LeBron James and his overall conditioning and his ability to stay focused in the most critical times, it's, it's one, of the, one of his better skills. And mentally, just how mentally engaged and just how much it takes for him to get to the point where he's at mentally. But you talk about finding spots and maybe a minute here, a minute there. Brad Stevens in the postgame brought up in the second quarter and the inability for the Celtics to extend the lead. Yes. And he felt like that yes. was the critical component of the game that may have changed the complexion of the game. To meet LeBron understanding that, hey, it may be a minute at the end of the first quarter, a minute in the second quarter. We still have the whole rest of the game left. He understands the the complexity of the whole game that him being on the court and every minute how much every possession matters and that's why he's at a whole nother level and one of the genius in, in Brad Stevens was he also realized that if I don't extend this lead I can't make LeBron that's why your point was so brilliant Le LeBron I can't make him exert this extra energy that I'm going to need in the third and the fourth quarter. So them not being able to extend that lead and make LeBron be more effective, be more engaged offensively, where sometimes he could rest, which he did last night, uh, a couple periods during the game. Um, those are very good point, though. Well, and the, when you say he can't, if he takes a minute off, we saw we were in the building, see? Game three of the NBA Finals last year. The Cavs have a seven-point lead with 90 seconds left in the first quarter. LeBron goes to the bench for 90 seconds. Beginning of the third, or second quarter, they're down three. They got outscored by 10 points in the 90 seconds he was on the bench. He couldn't afford that last night. And so this is why... I, and, I, and, I've, and I'd love to show the end of the game in a mo or the end of the game in a moment, the play with Marcus Morris, because <laughs> you heard Brad Stevens say after the game, "Man, this second straight year, our season's gone on to May 27, May 28th, and I'm exhausted." He said LeBron's gone on three weeks later for eight straight years, and that was the first time in the press conference he said it's a joke. Like how th there's a reason why since Russell Celtics. Nobody has been to more than four straight NBA Finals, and the Warriors are fighting and clawing for it. And for it to culminate in these two plays, where he trusts George Hill enough to kick the ball up court, and then on the deciding play, he outruns Marcus Morris, gets flagrant fouled, big old Marcus big Morris, big old Marcus Morris, flagrant fouls him, and goaltends, and the ball still goes in in the 48th minute of Game 100 of Year 15. We've never seen something quite like that ever all right let's take a break sarah thank you so much Thanks for joining for us me. enjoy Great the rest of the holiday weekend we'll see you back here coming up does Dell prescott need a number